Gates back and they're off and racing very slowly away. Starlight Nation in the light blue colours. Nails Murphy got away quite well and is prominent. So too Cholton Lane as well in the red and white colours. Uh, Noticeable Spencer just tracking across his principal market rival there, Nails Murphy. Heaven's Light, uh, the grey in the dark blue and white colours is racing in a roundabout third spot. Sam's Hope, the yellow cap, is next. Followed then by Billy Lou and then the pink cap of Floating Spirit, who's in mid division at the moment. They're then followed by Sun. Dazed. Then towards the outside of that we have Starlight Nation. Uh, towards the rear of the field also K Serra and Scarlet is the back marker as they head on down towards the final four furlongs. And out in front, Nails Murphy to Cholton Lane. These two have both walked worked across pretty easily from their respective wide draws. They're then followed in third spot now by Driven Along Heaven's Light. Then Sam's Hope towards the outside. Getting a little bit closer now, Floating Spirit towards the outer. Then on the inside, Billy Lou as they make their way down the lane now and head towards the final two furlongs. Nails Murphy now just being driven along. Cholton Lane for Spencer looking to go bang, bang, double-wise here. He's moving rather nicely on the outside. They're well clear now. Floating Spirit in third who is getting going. But it's Cholton Lane who sauntered to victory at Newcastle on debut. Still now not being asked many serious questions. Is getting going. Floating Spirit from the back is really now coming home strongly. So it's Cholton Lane. But Floating Spirit is working up a big head of steam here. And it's Floating Spirit on debut. Very interesting performance. Beats Cholton Lane in second. Followed then by Nails Murphy in third. Third, fourth horse home, Starlight Nation. A winning debut then for Floating Spirit, a double on the card for Jockey David Pro, but and trainer Andrew Bold. And this one in the Judmont colours. And when I saw 8 stone 5 David Pro in January, that should have been a tip in itself. She's beaten the two penalised winners. Our runner up again travelled like a very nice horse, Charlton Lane. And he has found the pressure, but this could be a nice filly that's won on debut. A little bit green in the stride. I was worried she was going to be stuck behind two outsiders. Our winners went to the front, but she's really picked up well when switched. And that's a lovely winning debut for this Dreadmont filly. It is an all-weather pedigree. Uh, the Dan won three from three on the all-weather, including a listed race at ten furlongs on final start at three. And the full sister did win at Glorious Goodwood on second start and didn't really progress, but you've got to be pleased to have got this daughter of Charm Spirit as done on debut. Here, Jamie Spencer looks like the race has won. He's seen off his main opposition, Nails Murphy. Travelled so strongly on the bridle, but he's been claimed by the winning newcomer. Strong form. They're well clear of the rest. Clive Cox's horse has run well back and forth. Starlight Nation, quite a big individual by Sioux Nation. But Dave Probert doing 8 stone 5, Tom. That probably was the tip in itself. Yeah, and it's interesting that both you and George said that uh, before and after the race, that it's uh, definitely something to be noted in January after the Christmas period and David Probert has got down to that weight and it's been the winning recipe hasn't it because it's a nice performance from Floating Spirits here George on debut. Yeah it was a good performance you can see the two the first and second favourite from their wide draws Nails Murphy under George Rooks gone forward and as he's just sort of trying to cross the field his horse latches on and becomes keen and you can see Jamie Spencer on Charlton Lane his horse is keen too with no cover and it's just, um, it's just annoying when, from a jockey's perspective when you're in this position. You're trying to overcome the draw and go forward and bo both your horses are just taking each other on. Whereas David Pro, but you can see she's a little bit inexperienced. She's latched on the heels a little bit going into the top end, but she's just racing in a nice economical fashion, just sort of one row back. Yeah, she is. At this point, so Nails Murphy and Shorten Lane both shown tendencies to be keen in the early part of this race. And still, even at this point, Nails Murphy a little bit fresh possibly, but they are going very slowly. They are, they're going steady, and that accentuates um, both horses running in their riders' hands. You can see David, just off that home bend, pills outside Sam's Hope of Richard Hannans and Alec Vakansky to get a clear passage down, down the stretch as, as that horse comes under pressure. And he sort of moves up. Jamie Spencer's body language looks like he's, he knows he's definitely got Nels Murphy covered, but he obviously can't see David in behind him, and he's picking up a head of steam under... He gives his filly a couple of flicks in the backhand and the right hand, and she really knuckles down well and gallops through the line strongly. If Jamie had kicked on at the same point David Probert was really asking his filly, do you think there could have been a different result? No. I think it would have been the same anyway? I think the filly was, was the best. It's just she, she really responded well to David and um, took a while to wind up. And To be fair, I think, um, I think, I think she'd have won anyway. And to Chorlton Lane's credit, I wasn't entirely sure how much he'd find off the bridle, because obviously at Newcastle he didn't have to come off it at all. And then here, 
He's only come off it in the very final throws, but I think he has found a bit in the closing stages, not obviously as much as Floating Spirit, but she has had that momentum on her side. Yeah, for sure, but um, I think she's obviously quite smart. You know, the first and second favourite, Charlton Lane and, and Nels Murphy. Nels Murphy definitely had very strong form. That race at Chelmsford was particularly strong. I'm sure George Rock would be frustrated that he his horse was not relaxed early doors and, and, and raced with a choke out. But um, they both bumped into a, a pretty smart filly first time out of Andrew Bolden, who's got his team of all other horses in good form. As he always does. And this filly has got a pretty smart pedigree, quite precocious. And she's a lovely mover, isn't she? She looks like she, she really wants... She, and, she, and she looks like she really tried as well. Looks like she wants to win. She's just got a willing way about her. Mm. And um, David had to give her a couple of flicks in the backhand to get her organised and get her rolling. She responded, and um, I'm sure she'll improve for the run. And you would have thought... Uh, her going forward, you know, she's she potentially going to be able to step up and trip a little bit. Might look for a, another novice under a penalty, do you think, with her? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sure she'd run again, really. Probably wait till the grass now. She, she's done the job one, and um, they can put her away now and, and, and just wait. Yeah, because it's, it's a slightly strange time, isn't it, this time of year, to, to introduce a horse? And then, to, in terms of what their targets might be, do you keep them going now until March, April time at the turf, or do you give them that two month break? I think the difficulty is what what happens is there may have been a hold up with her along the way, and they feel that she needs to have a run before they give her the, her time because they need to look, know what they're here for. You know, you can't just have them galloping at home every day. It's good for them to go away and have an away day on track to know what life's all about. Absolutely, eleven to the winner, floating spirit. One to note: David Probert and Andrew Warding for Judmont. Second was Chawton Lane, six to four. Third was Nails Murphy, six to five favourites. Winning time is 1.27.67, 4.07 seconds outside of the stand, the slowest time on the night so far, and James Millman is now joined by winning and informed jockey David Probert. It's a lean, mean David Probert back for the new year here at Kemp. An eight stone five for a Judmont filly. It was a tip in itself, and I went and opposed you, but well done. That was a lovely winning performance from Floating Spirit. Yeah, definitely. Uh, she's had a race course gallop around here, so uh, you know she handled this surface quite well. Um, and like you say, under the weight and uh, getting weight off those older horses, she, she's excelled really. I suppose the only thing would have probably let her down was not getting her way on turns, but she, she was professional for us. She, she took a good, good jump and a good sit in behind the speed. And once um, she got her legs sorted out into the straight, uh, she hit the line well. And uh, her dam didn't quite see a mile out, but I would imagine she, she probably would be a mile out. Yeah, she certainly hit the line very strong. You got a lovely turn to the end. I was slightly worried tracking the two outsiders, but she really picked up well. Considering Jamie was absolutely cruising, were you worried what Jamie would find? And you, you, know, you had to ride your own race, but he did look to be going really well. Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of had one drop back on me pretty quick from like two down, so I had to take her into the middle of the track on her own. And I just thought uh, she'd run around a little bit, but she was pretty straight, and I was lucky. I was able to build up enough momentum to run at Jamie um, through the last furlong and. Uh, I mean, she, she, I didn't really get a chance to get into her jill, but, she, she, you know, she was only hitting top gear the last half of them. Excellent stuff. Five winners in 24 hours. Well done. Yeah, it's been brilliant. Thank you.